listening to Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to the show. Breaking news out of California today is the San Jose State University football program has been caught red-handed with a litany of charges against the entire football program, including gambling, the usage of PEDs, and paying players and coaches under the table to throw their games for the entire season last year. The NCAA is expected to revoke the university's entire football program. I'm joined now by analyst Charles Sullivan. Charles, what do you think of these charges? Is it fair for the community to have to lose their football team and have it taken away from them? Hey, thanks for having me, man. Well, if they were to have their football team taken from them, they should have done it a long time ago after what they used. <laughs> <laughs> but look, San Jose State knew exactly what they were doing when they did it. The gambling, they did the bait against themselves. Is that why they went 1-11 and last season? Paying players and coaches to lose purposely as well, that's just unacceptable. I don't even want to imagine what they collected during their season. And the steroid usage is just ridiculous. You have a million-dollar locker room at your disposal for free. Put in the hard work and earn what you want. Look, I feel for the community losing their team, but the consequences... Look, hey, Charles, I'm sorry to cut you off, but uh, we have more news from the NCAA right now. It appears that San Jose State will... In fact, keep their team. Wow. However, they will start entirely from scratch. Listen to this. All current players and coaches are banned from competition. They will only allow walk-ons this whole season and will bring in an entirely new coaching staff. And leading the way will be a first-year coach by the name of Bridger Webb. What do you think of that, Charles? Uh, Well, I mean, it's... As I was just getting done saying, consequences needed to be dealt. And the NCAA just did it in a fair way that punishes those that deserve it, but also allows the school to keep their program. I kind of like it. A whole team of walk-ons, though, like Coach Webb, has a long road ahead to bring this program around. And I wish him the best of luck. He's going to need it. (laughs) You said it, man. Charles, thank you for joining us today. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Web Sports Broadcasting. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Captain Bridger, and today we are getting started with a brand new series that I've been wanting to do for so long, and I finally got off my ass and I started doing it. So as you heard... Massive controversy at San Jose State University, but luckily they get to keep their program. And today we are starting a complete walk-on dynasty with the Spartans of San Jose State. So Bridger Webb is at the helm for the Spartans going into the 2012 season. So some ground rules to kind of cover for this season. They're pretty basic, but I put some restrictions on us just to kind of make sure that... um, Makes it a little bit challenging, and I personally think it kind of adds a little bit of longevity to the series. Hopefully it goes well enough to where we can do this for quite a while. But the rules are as followed. Uh, We are not going to be changing the schedule. We're just going to keep what we have, what's given to us, and um, we can't change it. And, and, And I don't see any reason as to why we would want to. If for some reason we get like a stupid low schedule, but um, yeah, right now we're not going to be changing the schedules. As far as recruiting is concerned, we're only going to be recruiting from the pipeline states only. Um, I'm pretty sure it's California and I think Nevada is a uh, pipeline state for us, but we will see as we actually get the recruiting board set up. Um, All recruits except for two of them must have us in their top five meaning we can pick two recruits that we're not in their top five, but only two. The rest have to be, we have to be in their top five. Uh, We can only recruit one star above our school prestige. So for example, right now, San Jose State is a one star school, so we can recruit uh, recruits up to two stars. Um, We're going to recruit one athlete per year, or I guess up to one athlete per year. Um, I feel like you can kind of take athletes and put them anywhere. So we're just going to kind of minimize that and keep it to one athlete per year. And then we're only going to recruit normal, no more excuse me, than 20 recruits per year. Um, I don't think 
I really recruit more than 20 anyway, whether it be for this or offline. But just to kind of keep it, uh, I don't know, keep it under control, we're only going to be recruiting 20 recruits per year. So with that being said, let's get our recruiting board set up and see what exactly we need. We're going to be needing a lot, but we're, let's um, let's set up what we got going here. So right off the bat, we have no positional needs, which is fine um, because everybody on this squad is uh, is a freshman. I think there actually might be there might be a couple upperclassmen for some reason when I try to set up the the kind of team for walk ups um, for some reason it wouldn't let me delete some players that were I think like there's one junior um, there's one junior I'm pretty sure there's a sophomore I don't think we have any seniors everyone else are freshmen so there's there's that now looking at what we have right now um, looks like we're pretty much D minus across the board except for uh, running back running back is an F we're definitely going to be looking at that and then on the defensive side of the ball, we're D minus across the board, except for athlete, which is an F. And, um, you know, we'll probably grab one athlete like I just set the uh, the restriction for that. So we'll probably pick up an athlete and then everybody else will just kind of we'll just kind of pick and choose what we want, what we need. Who's uh, who's interested in, in the Spartans here after their controversy? All right. So looking, we have Tyler Martindale. He's a one-star halfback, but we are number one on his uh, recruiting board, so we will go ahead and target him. I uh, just realized it's probably smart to look at the roster and depth chart first before we start picking out who we really want on uh, the recruiting board. So, um, yeah, let's take a look at that. All right, so we got Teddy Mathis, quarterback number 19, leading the squad behind center. Um, he's <laughs> 43 overall. His uh, Let's take a look at his quarterback skills here his throw power is a 52 but his accuracy is a 70 so that uh that gives me some hope here that is his accuracy is pretty high so uh, our running back isn't even a running back he is a free safety kenny triplet a 48 overall behind him is pedro Kaysen. he's a strong safety 47 overall and behind him is aaron pope quarterback uh overall 47 so that's why our rating is an F. We have no running backs. Our fullback is number 30, Chad Miller, 43 overall. And behind him is a D tackle, Pat Hagen, and an outside linebacker, Sean Huffman. I think it's funny. We have we have one fullback on the squad, a, a dedicated fullback, but we have no dedicated halfbacks. I think that's pretty funny. Our wide receivers for the squad, James Curry, 44 overall. Jeff Lake, 43 overall. Adam Mitchell, 43 overall, Zach Wheeler, 41, Chad Miller, 40, and Myron Nelson, a quarterback, is our bottom wide receiver overall at a 40. Our tight end is number 80, John Webb. He's a 42 overall. Behind him is Sean Huffman and Andre McDonald. Our left tackles are hogs up front. Kevin Spencer, the starting left tackle. At guard, we have Scott Warren, 43 overall. Our ball snapper is number 60, Garth Howard. At right guard, we got Josh Rucker, number 70, 44 overall. And right tackle, number 64, Quentin Jones. He is a 40 overall right tackle. On the defensive side of the ball, left end, number 97, Eric Watson. is a 47 overall. Over on the other side, we got our boy Charlie Starr, number 58. Uh, no relation to quarterback in Ocala, Florida. 42 overall. At D-tackle, starting D-tackle, we got number 91, Paul Green. 53 overall. I do believe he's our highest rated player on the squad. Behind him is Pat Hagen, 47. Nick Sanders at 44. And then we have two linebackers to round out the uh, the defensive tackle depth chart. At left outside linebacker, we got number 43, Cole Webb. He's a 40 overall. At middle linebacker, number 59, Colt Gibson. He's a 45 overall. On the right side linebacker, we've got number 55, Ben Griffin. He's a 50 overall. Our starting cornerbacks are number 22, Jeff McKinney, 44 overall, and Chris Nixon, number 25, also 44 overall. We also got Aaron Pope back there and Sean Huffman as a, uh, a backup cornerback if we need him. Our starting safety is Charles Sims, 51 overall. Strong safety is going to be number 34, Aaron Robertson, 43 overall. Our kicker will be number 3, Stan Weber, 43 overall. 
I do want to take a look at his kicking skills. So his kick power is 45, and his accuracy is a 40. That's going to be brutal. And Stan Weber is also our punter. So that's the squad. Not a lot to work with this season. Obviously, we know it's going to be a huge challenge coming into the season. But uh, that's who we got. So we definitely want to look for some running backs, maybe a couple. Um, and then just kind of beef up everywhere, really. Like, we, we cannot go wrong in recruiting just about anybody. I also just realized our pipeline states are not what I expected we're in California and our pipeline states are Pennsylvania and New Hampshire. Wow, I did not I did not realize that. I thought we would only keep it in California. Um Man, that that's weird. I don't know if I should do California plus pipeline states to keep it I don't know, realistic. That just that seems crazy. Like I I don't think I would have expected California to have um have those pipeline states. Man, we're like just a couple minutes in and I feel like I already need to amend a rule like uh, you know what? No, we will we will keep it just pipeline states only for this season. Next season we'll we'll see how it goes. But unfortunately for Tyler Martindale, San Jose State will not be the wave for him. So I'm sorry, bro. We're going to have to remove you. So cruising through, there are no prospects that are two star that are from our pipeline state that is interested in us. Um, we might have to use one of our um, one of our two outside top five on Mr. Nicholas Newell. He's from Pennsylvania. He's a power runner, two star recruit, and we are nowhere near his board here. So we may have to add Mr. Newell here and um, utilize one of our two outside top five choices. All right, so we're having a problem here. All of our quarterbacks that we're looking at are from California. All righty, guys, so we picked up our 20 recruits we're going to be looking at, and um, I think we, we picked up a pretty good squad. I am going to already just amend one of the rules. We will recruit from California plus our uh, pipeline states. When I do a search for anybody that's interested in us, there is literally nobody other than California that's interested in us. So we're just going to have to do California, which I thought would be a pipeline state anyway, since that's where we're from. But uh, we've got number one on our board is going to be uh, Nicholas Newell. Um, he's not interested in us at all. So we're just going to have to try and recruit him. Um, he's a two-star power back. Uh, next, we got some quarterbacks, David Higgin and Adrian Cunningham. After that, we got a DN, Rob Olson, we're looking at. A strong safety, Cameron Washington. Cornerback, Sam Williams. Um, we added Tyler Martindale back onto our uh, our board here. Um, we have Will Horn, a middle linebacker. A guard, Jason Lewis. D-tackle, Nathan Wright. Wide receiver, Will Stevens. Another wide receiver, Kelly Leach. A guard, J.J. Bass. A center, John Henry. D-tackle, Jonathan Young. An outside linebacker, Derek Clark. Halfback, Brian Barrow. Uh, DN, Zach Thompson. Uh, cornerback, Brian Fuller. And a strong safety, Johnny Archie, to round out the squad. And looking now, I did not see Nathan Wright is not from California. So unfortunately, we're going to have to remove him from our board and grab another D-tackle prospect. All right, and with that, we're going to be adding Chris Woods, a D-tackle from uh, Santa Monica. So that'll round out the uh, the 20. All right, so now that recruiting is set up and ready to go, we're going to be taking a look at our schedule. Um, right now, it is a strength of a C-, minus, which isn't too terrible, but it's probably a good uh, good challenge to kind of start this, uh, this season. So we're opening the season with a bye week, and then we'll be playing Eastern Michigan at home. We'll be going to Navy and then coming home to play Colorado State then going to San Diego State. That is a rivalry game. I didn't know that was a rivalry game for us. And then we will be on the road against number four, Stanford, which I do know is a rivalry game between these two teams. And then we have a bye week. And then that's when we begin conference play in the WAC. Uh, we'll be at Nevada, bye week, and then against Utah State, at New Mexico State, uh, at home against Louisiana Tech, going to Hawaii, 
going to Idaho. And then we are rounding out the year at home against our rivals in Fresno State. So that's the schedule. Again, we cannot change it, so we're just going to leave it as is. And that's that. Alrighty, so the preseason polls are out in the San Jose State Spartans. Even though we are entirely walk-ons, we are still ranked above a good handful amount of teams. We are uh, ranked 113 in the country. Our uh, overall is a 29. Our offense is a 29, and our defense is a 32. So having those uh, those higher higher level walk-ons really helped us out there on defense. Um, but we again, we are above some uh, pretty good amount of teams. Some of them are uh, one of them actually is in our conference. So that's a that's a good start for us. So looking at the conference uh, preseason standings. We are projected to not go dead last, which is still pretty crazy to me. Um, we are over New Mexico State. That was the one team that we were above in the preseason polls. Even though their overall is a 66, ours is a 29. We are still projected to be above them in the WAC. Also good to note, I tried to make the conferences uh, realistic to 2021. But um, in this game, obviously, the Big East is not a conference. The WAC is not a conference. And you cannot delete conferences in this game. So that there goes that. Now, for kicks and giggles, I went to go see. I knew we were not going to have any preseason All-Americans. But we do not have any preseason All-Conference players either. Not that I necessarily expected it, but there's that. But with that, folks, that sets the groundwork, the foundation, the starting bricks here for the rebuild dynasty for the San Jose State Spartans. And we will get ready for some very exhilarating recruiting for next episode to kick off the season. I do appreciate you guys watching and thank you guys for coming in and, and checking out the new series, checking out the new, uh, the new look, the new, the new plans, the, the fun we're going to have here. I, I, this is going to be very challenging. This is going to be something different for me. Um, but I'm very excited to get things going here, and hopefully we're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff with this uh, with this group. Also, good to note, if you would like to be part of the squad, all you have to do is message me on YouTube. Just either drop a comment or, you know, no, just, just message me. Yeah, scratch all that. Just message me on YouTube if you'd like to be a part of the squad. I just need your details, your name, number, height, weight, what position you want. Um, and I'm going to get you onto the squad here so we can have some fun. But again, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Captain Bridger. We will see you all next time for week one, and I'm out of here, guys. Have a good one.